Hello and welcome to another episode of the Oxygenetic Podcast. We're brought to you every week by our sponsors, PrecisionFuelAndHydration.com. You can personalize your fueling and hydration strategy so you perform at your best. You can get 15% off your first order of electrolytes and carbohydrate fuel with the code OA23. And we're also brought to you by our sponsors, TeamOxygenAddict.com. We're going to hear today from Team Oxygen Addict athlete Emma Yates. Emma is joining us uh, from sunny York, I believe, today. Emma, how are you doing? I'm good, thanks, Rob. Nice, nice to see you again. Thank you. It's nice to have you back on the show after your your age group win at Ironman Wales. So I'm looking forward to hearing all about that. A um, couple of things you can do for us, please, listeners, before we kick this show off. Um, if you like and you enjoy this episode, if you could hit like and subscribe on your podcast player or hit like and subscribe on YouTube, it really helps out the way that the algorithms show our show to other people. And the more people can hear the show, the more episodes of the show we get to bring you. So that's fantastic. So I'm your host, Coach Rob Wilby, and the idea of this show is really we try and bring you episodes every week to motivate and inspire you along your triathlon journey. And it's great to be joined by you again, Emma. We've had you on twice before. We've heard your story uh, about Ironman St. George World Championships and Ironman Kona, the two big races that you've done. So it's great to get you back on and hear about how your 2023 has been. And firstly, to say congratulations on the age group win at Ironman Wales a few weeks ago. You said before, it sounds, it feels like a long time ago, but actually it's only two weeks or three weeks, I think, as we're recording. So yeah. So how are you doing? I'm good, thank you. Yeah, it does feel like a long time ago because I think when we did Ironman Wales, we had we had perfect conditions and it felt like summer. And suddenly it's a bit like winter today. <laughs> so not not quite the same. It does feel like we've changed seasons since since I did that race. Yeah. A yeah. lot has changed yeah. in the past couple of weeks, hasn't it? And and it was yeah. interesting. I was looking at the diary and thinking, well, it was third of September this year. Right. Next yeah. year, I believe it's going to be two or three weeks later I've just 20, 22nd of september i might be wrong so it, it's yeah. three weeks later which yeah yeah will be I interesting mean, with the it's weather. always a weather lottery yeah. in the uk yeah. isn't it but yeah it was great Absolutely. that this year yeah perfect. i was watching yeah. along with the video broadcast and it looked like you had as close to perfect conditions as you could get maybe too warm even for some people yeah, I'll take the warmth over the cold any day, though. So for, for me personally, it was absolutely perfect conditions. Yeah. I, I couldn't ask for anything better than that, to be honest. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Well, let's let's start by that. Let's start by talking about your race and how it went. Because for people who haven't been to Ironman Wales at Tenby, I honestly believe it is possibly the best location for an Ironman in the world. It's not a fast bike course, but in terms of just being blown away by how the place looks, it's it's pretty unbelievable. Yeah, and the start line, the amphitheater where everyone's watching from the cliffs and the swim out around the rock and the whole deal—it's it's unbelievable. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure I'll do it justice if I'm honest, but um, it's it is one of those starts. I don't think I've experienced a start like that in all honesty, and I have done Kona, and without taking anything away from Kona because that is amazing. Um, I think this was more special because it was in the UK and I think you know being on home turf is always quite special but just the the crowds in Tenby we when I went to register when I went down to T1 to start with um, at five o'clock in the morning there was hundreds of people already lining the route with the dogs and the small children and you know I was just like wow why is everyone here already um, so the atmosphere, even before, you know, when it was pitch black was just absolutely, it was building, it was amazing. And then, you know, lining up on the beach, having gone down the pink zigzag path um, with our pink plastic bags and putting those on the pegs. Um, you know, you had the fireworks, you had skydivers, the sky was all painted red and stuff. And, you know, you had the um, the anthem being sung and it was just the atmosphere was incredible. I think because it does feel like an amphitheater, like you say. Um, I've not experienced something like that before, and it really did send a shiver down your spine. And um, yeah, I, I absolutely loved it. I was really buzzing before we before we started. Normally, I'm a bag of nerves for this one. I think we were everyone I was with was just grinning, like you know, massive smiles, and just really excited to, to be there. Yeah, yeah it really does feel as though the town really embraces the event and it isn't an inconvenience yeah. like I felt in some places. Yeah. It's like all the locals get up oh, really early. It's like a festival yes, day there, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. From the minute we arrived in our hotel, the hotel staff were all excited for us. Every time we went out in, in, in Tenby, all the shop, you know, everyone in the shops, in the cafes, 
everyone was just, oh, you're here to do the Iron Man. It was incredible. I don't think it just felt like everybody in the whole place was was with you for for that event. It was it was amazing. Yeah, absolutely brilliant. Yeah. So for the people who've not been there, the thing that's different about Tembe is the town is essentially on the cliff tops and it's probably yes. I don't know how high you would say 50 meters or maybe 100 meters <laughs> high and you've got like zigzag paths so after you finish the swim yeah you can have to run up these zigzag paths and yes. it's a fair way to t1 isn't it yeah is it about a kilometer it's a kilometer yeah so you'll you hear about the pink bags I didn't really know much about the, these pink bags um but basically in addition to your normal transition bag you're given a pink plastic bag which is where you put your trainers in um and the idea is that when you come off the beach you put trainers on to run through the town because it is a kilometer run on just the streets um and obviously you don't really want to do that in bare feet um so so that's quite surreal because you i mean some people take the wetsuits off i kept mine on because i was really cold but you're then running in trainers and a wetsuit you've gone up a steep zigzaggy path which is probably only about 50 meters but it is quite steep and it, it's not easy it's quite a tough one to get up is yeah. all I'd say. Yeah. um and then you just run through the the, the, the town and the, there's loads of crowds out but we all look really stupid because you're in wetsuits and carrying this pink shopping bag you know <laughs> and you tra- and you're wearing your trainers so it's not how you would normally go out for a run I would suggest yeah um yeah but personally, I, I quite liked it because I kept my wetsuit fully zipped until the last few minutes. And that really warmed me up because I was I was cold after the swim. Um, yeah, OK. And actually, everyone else was zipping, unzipping, but I kept mine zipped up until quite near transition because I, I was enjoying actually getting quite warm in my wetsuit. And once I got warm, I could unzip it. And I always get my wetsuit off quite quick anyway. So I wasn't bothered about losing time taking it off. But it was it was actually quite nice keeping the warmth. Um, as we were running yeah but quite a surreal experience I have to admit <laughs> and very different to any other Ironman mm, or other yeah. triathlon sort of yeah. races as well yeah yeah so the, the swim itself then let's let's talk through that it's a two-lap swim yeah. um and it's interesting mainly because of the the swim around the rock at one end isn't it yeah yeah well you, so you start on the beach and you swim out past the rock in a sort of triangle um, and then come back and it's an Aussie exit. So you you run back onto the beach and do a bit on the beach and then go back and do it all again. Um, and, and the beach, is, obviously, it's tidal. So when you first go down past it at five o'clock, some of the boys are actually just on the sand. <laughs> and I was like, oh, that might be interesting if we're running around those, not swimming. But actually, by the time we started, obviously, the tide had come in and you were swimming, not, not running around the boys. But um, yeah, it's... Uh, there is a current. I couldn't tell you which way the current was going because I didn't really look at my watch. Um, I did wear my watch, but I don't really look at it. I just, um, I just look at it to sort of try and work out. How, you know, I'm an early there sort of things, but yeah. you could see quite well. I barely looked at my watch, but I think a lot of people were saying there was the current did affect your time more on the second lap. I didn't particularly notice it to be honest, but I'll, you know, it, it probably did, and I just wasn't mm. that aware of my times to be honest. Um. But the, the swim was good. I was really surprised at how fast people ran into the water. It was like a sprint start. <laughs> I was all People do get excited, don't they? Yeah, I, I was all for pottering down. And then I was like, oh, everyone's really sprinting. Um, so, yeah, I decided I better run. <laughs> yeah. So I think people were were relatively lucky this year. The state <laughs> of the water was certainly a lot calmer than it's been in previous years. What tips would you have for people doing the swim? Did anything stick out in your head? Um, that you would do the same next year or that you would do differently um you are right the swim the water was very calm um as I said I didn't particularly feel the current and it said it was a bit wavy but nothing like what you would expect in a sea so it it was almost like a lake swim if I'm honest but you it it wasn't a lake but it, it wasn't as bad as you might have thought for some sea swims that you hear about um personally my my problem is I get very cold in 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 the water and um before that I'd had a few swims up in York and the temperature of the water was about 16 degrees and I get I get rain ads in my fingers I can't move my fingers if I get too cold so I was quite nervous about the swim because I knew it was only about 17 degrees which is just on the edge of being a bit too cold for me um Mm. so I'd I'd bought a a thermal wetsuit um for this swim um as opposed to just my normal wetsuit and the actual water temperature was 18.3 
um, which was just legal to wear swim boots. Um, so it was 18.3 or below for swim boots and they announced it as 18.3. So I actually wore my swim boots as well. And I had a neoprene hat on. Um, and as as I was lining up, quite a lot of people were saying, oh, I wish I'd brought my neoprene hat with me as well, because it was it was cold. I think some people, most people were OK with it. But for those of us who suffer in the cold, it mm. was cold. I was shivering by the end of it, definitely. Yeah. But because I had all the thermal stuff, I was I was actually OK. Um, and that was my big fear because I've had other experiences. I've not coped with the water temperature that well. Yeah. But as a swim, I actually thought it was it was good. It was busy on the when we turned but not like other events. It was, it was it, it, because everyone was more spread out. It, it didn't feel like the usual sort of washing machine on some of the corners. It, you had a bit more space this time. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, that's a, that's a good tip. I think for people going to Wales because it is a little bit later in the year. And I think yeah. it's worth remembering that it can feel quite chilly at five o'clock in the morning yes. before the sun yes. rises and when the sun's not on you and you can, yes, that can have a big effect on how you feel in the water if you've yeah. if you've got a bit cold. Um, even sometimes we advise athletes to wear old woolly socks yeah. waiting around on the yeah. beach because yeah. keeping your feet warm can make yeah. a difference. So having swim yeah. socks on is is great. Yeah. It's great yeah, when definitely. you can do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then you warmed up on the run to T one. Yeah, <laughs> I, I lost a bit of time in my transition taking my boots off, but I'll take that because I came out of the water shivering, but actually feeling OK, which for me is is massive, uh, makes a huge difference. So I'll take the few seconds getting my boots off to keep to get that extra warmth in my body. But yeah, you get nice and warm running through transition. So that was that was good. And then transition was fine. I, you know, it was it's transition is in the same place. T1 and T2 is all one place. So actually it's a lot easier logistics wise and just knowing where all your stuff is as well so um that was really smooth it, it's you know brilliantly organized um no real issues in transition just straight through yeah I'm not I'm not a quick person in transition um but I you know I, it, it is what it is and you know I, I came out with everything in the right place so um getting onto the bike felt good yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, great. That that leads us on to the the bike course then at Ironman Wales. Describe for people who've never been to Ironman Wales what the what the situation is there with the, the number of loops that you had, the road surfaces, the conditions, the scenery. Talk people through how the the bike course is at Ironman Wales. Yeah, it's it I, it's sort of three loops. The first loop you go out towards the coast. Um, and it, it it's it's undulating. There's some little hills. There's there's a little spicy hill as you come back off the beach, but there's nothing. I would say there's nothing really bad, but it is quite undulating. And there's some bits where you're in a bit of a on a narrow road where you can't overtake. Um, so um, so you just have to pace it a bit better on those bits. But it it's a really nice cycle out to the coast and 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 incredible scenery. I mean, the whole route was incredible scenery. If I'm totally honest, but the first loop is this out out to the beach and then sort of back into Tenby and then you have two there are about 40k loops where it's hillier um for want of a better phrase and and it is it is hilly um but I'd say that where this is nice is that the road conditions are really good I thought the road conditions were very good on this course um I, I've done Bolton previously and I think the road surface there isn't that good but um it in, in Tembi and the surrounding areas, it was it was very good. Um, and I think there's a warning about a sandy road near the beach on the first loop. That was fine. It wasn't. I, w- I was expecting sort of sand dunes on the road or something, but actually it was it was it was fine. It was it was perfectly manageable. So um, yeah, I think condition wise, the road surfaces are very good. So whilst it is hilly, um, you know you can you can sort of cycle the hills properly without worrying too much about potholes and and things like that yeah yeah okay yeah. and then one of the things that's famous for a time man wales on the bike course is of course saunders foothill and the crowd yeah. you get there what was your experience like of being being that an is, athlete <laughs> that is amazing i have to admit you before you do that you do this little wiseman's hill wise you come off wiseman's bridge and do a hill um which is really steep actually and I, I hadn't wrecked the course I have no idea what what to expect other than I knew it was going to be really hilly and um that was a bit similar because it was at the first lap for that one there's loads of people on there and at first I thought oh is this is this heartbreaker last time and then I was like and then everyone was like no it's further along um so that's a nice little taster I think of what's to come but um yeah going up the, the hill was just incredible and it is 
it was a bit like the Tour de France. It was like everybody was crowding around you. And um, yeah, you, you just can't stop, stop smiling and, and laughing with everybody because it just it was just incredible, amazing experience. And I think you can tell now I'm still smiling when I remember it. And and it, at second lap, crowds had calmed down a little bit, not quite as busy on the second lap, but still incredible. And, and just the noise as you were cycling up, you, you couldn't hear a thing other than just the noise and the cowbells and music and, and everything that was going on around you. Yeah, you you almost, despite, despite the fact it was really steep, you, you almost didn't want it to end. Yeah. Nice. Oh, you can't say further than that, can you? If if the hill's really <laughs> steep, but you want it to keep going because yeah. the crowds are great. Yeah, it, yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, yeah. It does feel as though it's got that kind of reputation, almost like the Solberg Hill Challenge Roth yes. has got, where yeah, people yeah. flock there to spectate, and and it's become yeah. the Tour de France of the area on yeah. the day it happens. Yeah, yeah. I, I've not done Roth yet, um, but yeah, I think from what I've heard, I think it it sounds like it's very similar, and yeah, it was incredible experience. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. What advice would you give to people? Obviously, that the hilly, relentless, rolling mm. nature of that course makes heart rate, even power, very difficult to use as a metric and a guide. Mm. So, how did you how did you deal with that on race day? Um, I, I if I'm honest, I cycled a lot by fe- by feel. Um, yeah. I've done a lot of hill work leading up to this, um, and. I, I sort of, I know what I can do on the hills. I, hill courses actually suit me better than the flat, I think. Um, so, and I always, I struggle a bit with power on the hills because I know it's sort of, you have to even it out over the course of the whole thing. And I, I struggle with that because at times I think, oh, I'm pushing it too hard. And then you got a downhill when you, you, you know, you're not. And and so I, my, in my head, I was like, I've just got to stick to about 150 on average. Um so I was just sort of glancing at what I was doing without paying too much attention because it was also very, it was once we'd warmed up, once it got to about nine o'clock in the morning, half nine, it actually was really hot as well. So that wasn't quite what I was expecting at that time of year, if I'm honest. So so I just I just tried to stick to how I felt because I knew all the training I'd done leading up to this, that I knew, I know my body, I knew I'd be able to read what my body was telling me and in my head I was just like stick to try and get to an average of about 150 um yeah. but it's really hard when you're doing that stuff those sorts of hills and you know um but I think for me I pushed it quite quite a bit on the the first lap of the hills um and then the second lap I did ease off a bit because I just thought don't be that person who does a brilliant bike ride and then a rubbish run um and I knew the run was going to be tough with all the hills on the run. So I was just, I just eased it off a bit on the second lap just because I just wanted to protect my legs. Um, mm. And I knew I'm I'm someone who gets quite lifted by the crowd. So I knew going up the hills, I, I, I feed off the crowds and I thought, don't take too much out of you by getting overly excited on, on the hills just because of the crowd support. So yeah. um, I did, I did sort of cycle within myself a lot more on the second lap just to try and protect the run as much as anything. Yeah. yeah, I think yeah. that's it's really good advice for someone lining up to do Ironman Wales in that yeah. you have to do the training on similar kind of train that you're going to face. Yeah. It has to be yeah. relentlessly hilly. And then you have to, we always sort of say, don't we, there's, there's a, an art to heart rate and power as much as there's yeah. a science yeah. to it. And you need to learn what you can do over six hours plus, how yeah. it feels in a two to five minute burst and how yes. that affects you three yeah. hours later. And yeah. it sounds like you yeah. did a, a really yeah. good job of that. Yeah. So, in, in, I mean, you know, this in preparation for this, I'd, we'd had a family holiday in Lanzarote in summer, um, which for me was a bit of a self-imposed training camp. So um, where where we live in, in York, we have to cycle about an hour to get to any decent hills. So it's hard to get a good six hour ride of hills in. So when we went to Lanzarote, I took my, my tri bike with me. Um, and we've got three teenage boys who don't get up until about two o'clock in the afternoon. So actually I can go out and do my stuff and they don't even know I've done it half the time. Um, but I used that holiday to do a lot of hill cycling. Um, and, you know, as anyone who cycled in Lanzarote knows, it's really windy over there as well. And actually we had a few days of really bad wind when we were there. So that was all really good training because actually the hills are bad enough. But when you're going downhill there, if you got the wind into you, it's like going uphill as well. So for me, that was that was made a huge difference because I really got a lot of hill work into my legs, um, which 
gave me that sort of I call it muscle memory but you know that sort of ability to to know how to cycle the hills and not be afraid of the hills when I when I went to Wales um yeah and it you know just helps because where I live and with work and everything I can't get out to the hills as easily as, as I would want to um so so yeah that sort of gave me that sort of that 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 power in my legs that I knew I could rely on when I had to in, in Ironman Wales and how far how far out from Ironman Wales did you do that sort of training camp holiday um I think it was about five weeks um yeah. I think I came back and I had five weeks before Ironman Wales or something like that yeah or four weeks yeah I'm trying yeah. to think yeah five weeks yeah yeah so it's yeah. I guess for people listening that's it's close enough that you'll have the physical benefits and you'll have the memory of having done it yes. still yeah. But you can also lose the fatigue of the training camp yeah. and you can yeah. and you can be fresh yeah. enough for race day. Yes. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's I think that's an inevitability. We often get this question from athletes, which is, you know, I've I've entered I'm on Wales or I've yeah. entered I'm on Lanzarote and I live somewhere flat. <laughs> what do I do? How to, how can yeah. I simulate? Yeah. yeah. You know, or in extreme cases, I've entered an event in the Alps yeah. and I live somewhere flat. What can I do? Yeah. And I think in an ideal world, people will hear this and go, oh, before I enter that event, I should consider how I would train for that event yeah, yeah. and make a plan for it. Because it's got to be yeah. training camps or mini trips to yes. a similar yeah. kind of train you're yeah. going to race yeah. over. Yeah, I, I think, I mean, to be honest, we were look, I was lucky. It worked with summer holidays for the kids. I'd have still done it without that. Without that, I probably just wouldn't have done as well. I'd have, be, I'd have found it much harder work. You know, so I guess it's that yeah. balance, isn't it? It's what's what's possible in leading up to these things. And it's not always possible to do that preparation. I, I was going for my age group win. So for me, it was all about, I, I knew I needed to get the hills into my legs and and I had the opportunity. So yeah, it's not everyone's idea of a summer holiday. <laughs> <but>. <laughs> do you know what though? The crossover of the Venn diagram of people who that is their idea of a summer holiday and yeah. listens to this podcast is probably like two circles yeah, on top I know, of each other. I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. So I liked, I liked you'd used coach Chris's patented protect the run idea as a mantra during yeah, the bike ride. Definitely. That yeah. Brings you back down into, there's a nice whizzy hill back down into Tembe as a, mm. as a treat for the end yeah. of it. And how did you feel heading out onto the run? I felt good. Actually. I, I actually found I felt the best I've ever felt coming off the bike um, and coming off on getting onto the run. I did have that initial tiredness. You always have that initial first kilometre where your legs felt tired, but I knew actually my legs felt good. Um, I, I knew I'd done the bike justice. I'd cycled it within myself. And so I think I had, I felt like I'd protected the run. I didn't come out thinking I'm really tired. I, I've, I've finished Bolton before and thought, I am so tired. I don't think I can run a marathon. But this time I had none of that. I actually thought, oh, I feel all right now. And, you know, I didn't I didn't have that feeling coming off the bike of thinking, thank goodness that's over. I was actually, oh, that was all right, you know, and I could carry on if I needed to. So, um, yeah, so I think I personally, I think I paced it well. I have an, yeah. a legal question. Could I have gone a bit harder? But actually, I think you, I think in a way that's probably good. And I think Chris has said to me before, if you come off the bike feeling that way, you probably have paced it about right. So. Um, so yeah, probably was about spot on for me um, because I did feel strong on the run. Yeah, yeah. I think that's that's the marker, isn't it? If you finish the whole event afterwards thinking, could I have gone harder on the bike? Yeah. Maybe I could, and you've had a good run. Yeah, yeah. Then I think if you you kind of like leave something in the savings account for the run, and you can yeah. squeeze all that out onto yeah. the run, even if you had gone five minutes faster on the yeah. bike you probably would have gone a little bit slower on the run and it yeah. evens itself it out. It balances out, doesn't it? Yeah. 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 All right. Yeah. So the run course at Ironman Wales then, yeah. for people, again, for people who've never been or even for people who have been, describe this because it's it's amazing. Yeah. It, it's four laps and it's through Tembe. Um, and so it is it is just like you are just surrounded by crowds virtually the whole route um, and crowds that are just going crazy the whole time. I mean, their enthusiasm is incredible. How some of them kept going with that level no of noise for that whole day is, is unbelievable. Um, but it, you are lifted by the crowds. And I remember when we arrived at a hotel, they, the, the receptionist said, if you ever feel tired on the run, you you will just be lifted by the crowd and they'll keep you going. And she was absolutely spot on. They They just... They just kept you going the whole way around. It was it was amazing. There was no bits where you felt on your own or 
that you you know you weren't being supported by somebody so yeah um it is it, it's a four lap course and it's very hilly that's all i would say and twisty um so you basically to describe it simply you basically run up for two miles for two miles do two little turnarounds where you get your your arm your, your lap band and then you basically come back down for two miles into the center of tenby and then do a sort of two mile route through Tenby which is quite twisty and turny and, and up and down again um, and then you head out and do it all again um, but it is just it's a great course um, it's really tough but I quite liked I'd not trained for a hilly course I have to admit because most of my running's on the flat um, but actually in my head I actually quite like that course because I think for me it was just like get up the hill get some fluid at the top of the hill and then you know, you can pace, you can stretch your legs out a bit more on the downhill. And then the crowds actually through the main bit of Tembu were incredible. So you, you barely, you sort of just flying through that because you, you're so lifted by all the people and, and the kids all wanting to high five you and the, the little power up boards that they, they have all over the place. So, so yeah, it was, you know, for me, it was like, just do the effort to get up the hill and then the rest of it, you just enjoy. <laughs> yeah. I, I love that the part of Tenby, how the course kind of winds back on itself and in and out of the little yeah, streets. And yeah. for anyone who's not been, it's got a feel of, it's almost like um, a bit like York's shambles, yes. isn't it? Or yes. a bit like yeah. the Diagon yeah. Alley in, in Harry Potter, yes. really narrow yes. cobbled yeah. streets. Yeah. yeah. And spectators can move across between yes. the roads and yes. see their athletes loads yeah. of times. I think yeah. it's fantastic. Yeah, my, my husband was watching me and he kept popping up at different places. So I never quite knew where he was going to be next. Um, but you're right, it is it is a bit, it is really narrow streets and cobble streets and it, you sort of lose a bit of sense of direction at times. Um, and also because there are two beaches, you know, that so you, you sort of, when I first tried to work out where we were running, I got totally confused around the little streets. But once you're running it, it makes sense. But um, yeah. Yeah, it is. It's quite it's quite an unusual course, I would say, but but really good fun to run it. Really good fun. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Now, you mentioned earlier on your aim was to win the age group. Yeah. Um. So let's talk about the racing. How aware were you at the time of where your competitors were, if at all? Um, Very aware. <laughs> um, so so um, Luella, the the woman who came second to me, um, incredible athlete. I've been inspired for her for by for years, um, and she she always beats me by a country mile. If I'm totally honest, she's she's just incredible. She she's a bit like a machine on the bike and the run, and I have so much respect for her. And she beat me in Bolton in 2019, um, you know, and I was just absolutely amazed at how fast she could go. Um, and and she's just an amazing triathlete. Um, huge respect for her. So I, I'd seen her on the bike course um, a couple of times. Um, she overtook me on the second lap like a bullet. Um, and I just thought, oh, fair enough. She's a, she's faster on me on the bike. Um, and so I, I'd seen her coming on the run when I came in on the bike. So I knew, I knew exactly where she was. And she knew exactly where I was. Um, but you know, she she's an, an incredible. She's a really really consistent runner. So. I knew I just had to try and do my thing and see what happened. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, in a way, it's worse knowing what you're up against because you know how good they are. Um, and I think for the whole time, I, I was gaining on her, um, but it was it was really close. Um, and going into the fourth lap, um, I think I hadn't... I, she'd started behind me, so she, it was a... I thought I had about a six-minute lead going into the fourth lap but it was actually only 90 seconds because of the really times yes yeah, so and my husband shouted at me you've only got a 90 second lead she was a little bit annoying because I'd been planning some extra walks on the fourth lap because the hills were taking their toll at that point but um so yeah the fourth lap was quite hard because I, I I know how good she is um and I knew I'd just have to you know there was no margin to sort of relax at all on that last lap so yeah yeah so wow. that, you know it was good and you know I, I think the the margin was four minutes in the end which is is really close you yeah. know over that sort of distance it's incredibly close um you know um and I think to the third place athlete was another two hours so I think that shows sort of what a, a battle we'd had and yeah you know but you know without 
without her, I'd have probably been a lot slower in all honesty, because I had that incentive to really push it on the run. Um, yeah, but huge respect for her as an athlete, because, you know, I've, I've admired her from afar for years and years and years. So, yeah, yeah. Great to have someone to to push you and have that battle with, I suppose. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And nice to come out on top this time. Yeah, and, I, and actually that was that was quite special because, as you know, when I finished Bolton last year, I didn't know I'd won my age group. So I finished feeling a little bit like, oh, you know, I know I've done quite well, but I've still not won my age group. And it's only when you told me at the finish afterwards that I realised, whereas actually this time I, I knew just towards the end, my, um, someone had shouted at me from the crowd, actually. And then my husband had shouted at me as well later on. So I knew I had it in the bag just as we were finishing. So actually running down the red carpet, knowing I had the age group win was really special. Um, yeah. I mean, it would be really special anyway, to be honest, because it's such an incredible finish. Um, but knowing that for the first, you know, it's the first time I finished an event, knowing I, I actually had the age group win was was really special, really special, yeah. Yeah. Oh, congratulations. That's brilliant. Thank you. Love it. I'm well deserved after all your hard work. Yeah, I, I knew what I had to do. And I, I, you know, I I when I saw when I saw Luella's name on the, the start list, I knew, you know, I knew what would be needed. And I, you know, I had a good idea of what I'd have to do. I didn't particularly think I'd win it, but I knew, you know, my aim was to just be as close to her as possible you know, and try and close that margin that she always has over me, you know. So, yeah, um, yeah, it's just one of the, you know, Brilliant. I'm sure there'll be lots of other events where she's miles ahead of me again. But, yeah, for that one, it was, it worked well for me on that day. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So will you take your, or did you take your slot for, for Nice? No, we we had to leave quite early the next morning to get home for work and, kids going back to school and stuff so I was gutted I couldn't go to the award ceremony really disappointed but you know it's yeah <laughs> we have jobs we have that's what pays for these events and yeah and we had you know the kid we'd left the kids um so we had to get back and get them sorted and ready for school so so now a bit really upset about that but it, it is just one of those things isn't it it just doesn't always work out um you know I'm grateful to have managed to to squeeze that one in this year so yeah um, but one of one of our fellow athletes picked up my award for me and, and posted it on afterwards, David Brown, which I'm really grateful for, because that means an awful lot to me to have that on my mantelpiece to look at. So, yeah. Yeah. So that yeah, that was brilliant. really nice. I'm very grateful to him for that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you mentioned there, uh, you know, sometimes things are not going to plan. We had a, a chat in the, the pre-interview yeah. here and. And I genuinely meant what I said, I think a lot of athletes assume they hear the story of someone winning yeah. or doing very well and they assume everything goes right all the time. Yeah. And yeah. I know I used to assume this when I was racing, <laughs> all my competitors are just having an easy life and it's only me that's in the shed at nine o'clock on a Sunday evening yeah. or whatever. Um, you race at Ironman Frankfurt earlier this year. Yeah. It was one of those that didn't quite yeah. go the way you'd hoped it to. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about that. What was your experience there? Yeah, I entered Ironman Frankfurt just to do one early in the season to to just get that feeling of doing an Ironman again and reminding myself how hard it was, I think. Um, and training had gone really well. I'd done everything I should have done. It's a it's a lake swim. It's a fairly flat bike course. It's undulating, but there's no killer hills. It's it's relatively straightforward. And the run is reasonably flat. It's it's round a river and you go up and across the river over bridges, but it's there's nothing in it that's really challenging, not like Wales. Um, and, and I'd prepared for it. I'd done all the preparation. I was feeling good. Um, got there. Um, lots of little things didn't go quite right before it. Lots of stressful situations at the airport, not being allowed to put our bikes on the plane because they'd switched to a smaller plane and having to stand at the check-in for over an hour, talking to lots of airport people until they agreed they might be able to squeeze the second my bike on the plane. And lots of just lots of things didn't go quite right before it but nothing nothing major but on the day I didn't feel quite right um I just just felt a bit off I, I hadn't my my toilet visits weren't quite right um my stomach didn't feel quite right I just assumed it was just nerves you know and then the swim went really well um the bike I thought went okay I felt quite sick on the bike um and I struggled to get my food into me um 
but but yeah but I, I did I thought I did okay on the bike although I did find it quite hard work given it was a relatively flat course um and then on the run I set off running and I, I felt I felt okay but I didn't feel 100% my gels weren't sitting with me at all very well um and then at about 16 kilometers um I was violently sick and continued to be like that for the rest of the run course so I think for about the last 24 kilometers or something I just every time I had water or anything I just brought it straight back up again um mm. so not a good experience um and not not a particularly enjoyable end to to an event um, I did finish it and I didn't I wasn't that bad I still ran a 404 marathon which I know is not I, bad I was gonna say is, is a <laughs> great run considering you were constantly being yeah, sick for the last I know I know but it's not it's not the state I'd want to be in doing a thing like yeah. that because I really, I really was in a bad state. And, and at the end of it, I, I was in, I was in a lot of trouble when I finished it is all I'd probably say. So it took an awful lot out of me, did that one. And, and I just didn't, and I didn't enjoy crossing the line. I just, I felt so ill doing it. So um, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm still not quite sure what caused that, whether it was too many gels or, something in the water whether I had a, some sort of stomach bug that I'd gone with you know from the UK I've still I still don't really know what what caused it, it that does sound like there. some kind of illness that was building with you maybe you not being yeah. quite right the day before the race yeah and one of those yeah. things it's so hard when it happens right yeah. on race day and you've traveled out and you're and, out uh, there and yeah 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 so no so I, I did have a few I did I did look at sort of what I'd eaten and drink, drunk on the day and try and work out have I done something wrong or different um still not really sure to be honest um but the difference for Wales is that I actually avoided gels until the run um because gels do give me stomach issues normally so I tend to leave them for the run anyway in fact that I'd taken quite a few before the run I'm still not sure that was what caused the issues but I thought I'm not risking it for Wales so yeah but no that one Frankfurt was I'm glad I've done it and I'm glad I've finished it um and actually it was an amazing event so you know I would recommend it if anyone wants to do it it's a great course and it's really well supported it just didn't happen for me that day it was really really tough experience yeah yeah, yeah. well it sounds like you you took that on the chin and you you accepted I was probably ill yeah I still had an amazing time the race didn't go the way I hoped it would but yeah. I think you learn a lot about yourself in those yeah. kind of events where things do go terribly wrong whether you're the kind of person who folds or whether you go yeah. I'm just going to grind this out and it sounds yeah. like you're very much in the second category yeah 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 I think I, for me it was just you can walk it you can get through it just just finish it and for me it was more about what what caused it is it that I was just had a funny stomach bug or, or was there something with what I'd eat my preparation you know more more in terms of the there was a dehydrated before it and stuff like that so um mm. again I've not really been able to pinpoint it um but it did make me think a lot more for Wales on how I prepare for that um certainly with the fluid and the, the food intake on the course and just making sure I practiced and practiced in the lead up to that one yeah yeah well, at least you got the end of season result that you wanted with the yeah. race at Wales. That's the that's the best way to end it with an age group win, isn't it? I know. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's good. Yeah. 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 So last last question then. What's next for you? What what are you looking for for heading into the next season? If I'm honest, I'm not sure. There's a few Ironman. I'd, I mean, I, I would have liked to have taken a spot at Nice. Um, I, I would quite like to do that. I did that as the half distance world champs a few years ago, and it was a fantastic venue for the half. Mm. And that, having watched the men's this year, I would quite like to do that. So whether there's an opportunity to try and grab another spot, I'm not sure. I'll see. Um, I'm not, I haven't got anything planned for yet. It's just not because I don't want to do something. I've just not got, we've got kids with GCSEs and stuff coming up. So we're in that cycle of important kids exams at the moment. So it's, it's trying to, work it all around that at the moment but yeah I, I, I will try and get in Roth again that's something I've been trying to get into the last few years and then Ironman Lanzarote is the one that I still really want to do um but I need to be able to do a training week for that before I go off and do it so that might be a few years away yet yeah I love how that hasn't put you off you spent time describing how even in Lanzarote when you're going downhill if you're into the wind you have to pedal yeah. and then you go but I still want to do the race I, I get that 
It's an yeah. amazing island, isn't it, Lanzarote? It's, it, it's I just like love it's made it. for an yeah. island. The one lap around the island thing is fantastic. Yeah, and I think I've cycled most of the Ironman course now, so I know I know how tough it is. Um, but I also re- I just really like it as a course. It's in, it's just so unique in terms of the scenery and the hills, and and it's that one, isn't it? It's like you know everyone says, oh, have you done Lanz-? for me? It's that I just really would like to do Lanzarote at some point um so we'll see yeah i'm not sure that'll be the next year or a few more years so i need, maybe when the kids have left home we'll do that one yeah it has got that that cachet of a long standing i think it's been going 30 odd years at this point hasn't yeah. it and yeah when i was getting into the sport in the early 2000s the local athletes would describe it with a reverence of yeah almost like the kona of europe yeah we're going to this yeah. island and yeah we're just praying that the weather's going to be kind to yeah. us and that we don't get punished yeah. too much so yeah, yeah i can yeah yeah see why so, an athlete like you would yeah. be drawn to that yeah so maybe maybe one day but i'll i'll see yeah not not got a plan for next year at the moment but definitely trying to do an ironman of some sort next year yeah awesome yeah. Oh, well, listen, thank you very much for taking the time to come and join us. It's been thank great. Um, I loved hearing the story and congratulations on the uh, on the win for Thanks, Ironman, Ironman Wales. Thanks, Rob. Thank you. Uh, just before we wrap this up, I'm just going to give a shout out and say thanks to our sponsors, Precision Fuel and Hydration.com. You can go over to their website and you can use the free fuel and hydration planning tool to receive a personalized strategy for your next race. So they'll help you balance your carbohydrate intake, your electrolyte intake and your fluid intake, because as I'm sure Emma will let us know, there's much more to Ironman than just being fit. It's about balancing all of those three alongside the fitness as well so you can even book a free one-to-one video consultation with pf and h's athlete support team and they'll be happy to help you nail your race nutrition plan and also if you've liked what you've heard today and you're interested in coaching help going into the next season we would love to hear from you we always have some slots opening up at this time of year so i think we've got the most comprehensive coaching program for busy age groupers for 70.3 and iron man so please get in touch there's a link in the show notes to book a call straight through to my calendar Don't sit there wondering, don't sit there, am I the kind of athlete who Team Oxygen Addict would take on? We'd love to just have a chat with you and work out how we can help you going forward into the next season. So remember, there's links in the show notes. You don't have to remember them. And until next week, have a great, safe training and racing week. I'm Coach Rob Wilby, and you've been listening to the Oxygen Addict Podcast.